Between right and wrong, don't know which way to go. All roads lead to home, so that's where I'ma go. But I am home, so I ain't gotta move no more. Embrace myself and be acquainted with the face I show. Hide a nigga behind a mask, but I know eyes though. Look down the seat of your soul, it's like a light show. Yeah. 
human minds. I have these agents placed in every calling. They represent every race and creed, every religion. Who are your greatest enemies on earth, your majesty? All who inspire people to think and act on their own initiative are my enemies. Such men as Socrates, Confucius, Voltaire, Emerson, Thomas Paine, and Abraham Lincoln. And you are not doing me any good either. Is it true that you use men who have great wealth? As I have already told you, poverty is always my friend because it discourages independence of thought and encourages fear in the minds of men. Some wealthy men serve my cause, while others do me great damage, depending on how the wealth is used. The great Rockefeller fortune, for example, is one of my worst enemies. That is interesting, Your Majesty. Will you tell me why you fear the Rockefeller fortune more than others? The Rockefeller money is being used to isolate and conquer diseases of the physical body in all parts of the world. Disease has always been one of my most effective weapons. The fear of ill health is second only to the fear of poverty. The Rockefeller money is uncovering new secrets of nature in a hundred different directions, all of which are designed to help men take and keep possession of their own minds. It is encouraging new and better methods of feeding, clothing, and housing people. It is wiping out the slums in the large cities, the places where my favorite allies are found. It is financing campaigns for better government and helping to wipe out dishonesty in politics. It is helping to set higher standards in business practice and encouraging businessmen to conduct business by the golden rule. And that is not doing my cause any good. What about these boys and girls who are said to be on the road to hell? Are you in control of them? Well, I can answer that question only with yes and no. I have corrupted the minds of the young by teaching them to drink and smoke but they have me baffled through their tendency to think for themselves. You say you have corrupted the minds of the young people with liquor and cigarettes. I can understand how liquor might destroy the power of independent thought, but do not see what cigarettes have to do with helping your cause. You may not know it, but cigarettes break down the power of persistence. They destroy the power of endurance. They destroy the ability to concentrate. They deaden and undermine the imaginative faculty and help in other ways to keep people from using their minds most effectively. Do you know I have millions of people, young and old of both sexes, who smoke two packages of cigarettes a day? That means I have millions of people who are gradually